And I, I ran across some understanding on waiting on the Lord that I wanted to share this morning. And so to begin with in Psalms 30, verse 5, it says, I wait for the Lord, my soul doth wait, in his word do I hope. It immediately gives us the understanding that I'm waiting. My, my thoughts, my heart are waiting on the Lord, but I'm using the word as my basis for my hope. Not my, not my, my uh, opinion, not my dreams, not, not just the vision, but I am use, utilizing the word as where my basis and my anchor is for my hope. Verse 6, my soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they that watch for the morning. Now, when you look up the word to wait, and I tried to find a really good image of this, and I, I just, we had, we had stuff happening this weekend, and storms, and dogs, and all that kind of stuff, and so I could not find a really good image in time, but to wait means to twist together. It's like a bind, the binding of a rope that's twisted together, an extension cord from one point to another, that's that waiting, that, just that twisting together to make it stronger. In, in one commentary I've read, and it was Dake's commentary in the Dake's Bible, I think he had the best idea of what waiting, if you could put waiting in a, a terminology of that braided rope that just continues to twist to get tighter and tighter and stronger and stronger. And every image I could find of a twisted braided rope showed it being starting to fall apart, and that's the opposite direction I want this image to go. And so, but Dakes made a statement. He says, the idea is that God is at one end of the cord and the human heart is at the other. And if I looked at that for waiting, it's like being anchored to God. That I, he's got one end of the rope, I've got the other, and hopefully we're not in too much of a tug of war. Anyone ever been there? You know, you get in there and you dig in, you're, you're in a digging really hard and you're just like, I'm not going to move forward. And God's going, I just need you to come this way a little bit. I refuse to. And, you know, but that waiting is that twisting of that cord, making it stronger and tighter. He continues to say, and it, uh, the idea is that God is at one end of the cord and the human heart is at the other end, pulling at God and longing for him more than those on their last watch at night longing to be relieved of their duty by the coming day of the shift. So when I think about what waiting means, by just the definition, I've taken a rope, and God's got one in, I've got the other, and we've twisted it tight so I don't ever let go. That every bit of my um, safety net, every bit of my protection, every bit of what that looks like means that I'm holding on to that rope with everything I have in me and I'm twisting it around who I am in my identity to hold on to it. I'm pulling on the Lord, not in resistance, but to make sure that I'm trying to get closer and closer to him as I wait, all based on the word. Now, I thought it was interesting, this waiting upon the night as far as that verse goes. Because the verse itself said, My soul waited for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they that watch for the morning. If any of you have ever worked in public service, worked a night shift at a restaurant, worked a night shift anywhere in your world, have you ever worked a night shift? What is that? I mean, this is the feeling. You're watching the clock. When you get to about, because my shift changed at 6.30. By 5.30, I'm, I'm doing this. It's like, please don't give me a call. I don't need a long report at 6 o'clock in the morning. Means That means I'm not getting off work till 7 or 8 o'clock, which means I'm not getting my breakfast. You know, those are our thoughts. But when you're starting to watch and you're working a shift and you get off at 8 o'clock in the morning, you're eagerly watching for everyone who comes in the door. Why? You're ready to go home. Some of you must have had a really good night shift. Because I, for me, it was like I'm looking at that thing going, uh-uh, come on. And when you, you're, you know, you're watching, knowing that your replacement normally gets, thank you, Nicole. Nicole's like, mm -mm, no, I'm, I'm eagerly waiting. Because you're watching that clock because you're eagerly waiting for the next shift to relieve you. That's how we wait on the Lord. Eagerly waiting for him to walk in the door and say, it's time. 
eagerly waiting to, for us to walk in. We're, we're just standing there. We're watching on the door. I can, I can see Teresa getting ready to come into the, the sanctuary, and we're eagerly waiting for her to come in the door. Now she's backing up because now she's embarrassed. You know, but we're eagerly waiting for the next shift, and we're eagerly waiting, and you're on the edge of your seat, and you're still doing your job. You're still occupying until he comes, but you're still doing everything you're supposed to, but there's an anticipation going. The moment he walks in the door it means I get to clock out, and I'm done. That's the waiting for the morning. Because if you've, I mean, take this time frame, you got shepherds, you got people watching the flock at night, it's dark, dark 30, and you're trying to keep up with crazy, not the smartest sheep in the world, and they're all running around, and you're trying to keep them all contained in one particular area, and you're using your rod and your staff to make sure they're all corrected, and you're waiting for that replacement shepherd in the morning after you've bought off, fought off lions, tigers, and bears, and wolves, oh my, and you're waiting for the next guy, and you're tired, and you're worn out, and your coffee's worn out, or your C4 drink, or whatever it is that you drink for an energy drink, and you're tired, and you're worn out, and you see that shepherd walk up, and you're like, <gasps> Yes, thank you for showing up this morning because you're waiting. That's the waiting that God wants for him. 